Are you ready for the trip? You know what trip I mean, right? It's the pilgrimage to Bethlehem, the journey to the manger, the journey of Advent. The world around us tells us that the way to prepare for the coming days and weeks leading up to Christmas is to run around shopping or putting up a Christmas tree or hanging your stockings. And all of that is fine, but that is not the path or the journey that really leads to Christmas. You see, if we don't choose now the path that leads to the real Christmas, then we might not arrive at the right destination. We might not be prepared for the real celebration. In church, we call the season leading up to Christmas Advent. The word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming. During Advent, we anticipate the celebration of when Jesus came to us over 2,000 years ago in the flesh as a baby, God with us. We also look forward in eager anticipation to the coming of Christ's kingdom when he returns for his people a second time. And we celebrate the ongoing presence of God with us and ask him to be born anew in our hearts. The destination of Christmas is not to arrive on a nice day when we can open gifts or visit with friends or eat yummy treats. No, the destination is to arrive at a Christmas that celebrates the Christ child, God with us. We want to end up with a Christmas that is a joyous celebration of God dwelling among us through a heaven-sent baby named Jesus, and a celebration that looks forward to his return one day. John 1.14 says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So how do we get there? Well, like any journey, we're going to need a map. In our lives as Christians, our map is the Bible. It points us to Jesus and guides us along the way. If we make God's word a daily part of your Advent journey, it can serve to lead and direct your steps. It can be your map. Listen to God's voice and allow him to help you prepare the way. To help you get there, we have a tool to share. It's an Advent calendar. It has a Bible verse for each day. Take a few minutes each day to read the verse of the day and let it guide you. Watch as God leads you through Advent and navigates the roadblocks and distractions that can pull you off course. Allow God to direct your steps so that on Christmas you are at the right celebration. You'll be at the birth of our Lord Jesus in your heart. I don't know about you, but most years the pace that my feet move between Thanksgiving and Christmas seems to pick up by several miles an hour. It seems like I'm continually rushing from here to there in order to fit everything in and get it all done in time for Christmas. It's exhausting. But somehow we are compelled because we want to be ready. It's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, and yet we seem to spend it scurrying around too busy to rest. But this year's journey can be different. We can change the pace. We can choose to interrupt the scurry. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That verse from Matthew 11 reminds us that Jesus is the source of our rest. When we come to him, we will find a respite from the chaotic bustle of the world. When you go on other journeys, you're told to watch your step, to be careful and intentional about where your feet land. This journey is no different. Take your time, watch your step, and be intentional about finding rest. And I mean real rest, the kind that comes from trusting in Jesus. One Advent practice that may give you a chance to pause and to rest in your Advent journey 
is the practice of lighting an Advent wreath. An Advent wreath has five candles, one for each week in Advent and one in the center, which is the Christ candle, to light on Christmas Eve. Daily or weekly time spent lighting the Advent candles and reading or reflecting on the meaning of the season is a wonderful opportunity for worship. It is a discipline that can remind you to find your rest in Jesus. Tonight, we are giving you a simple Advent wreath to make it home. There are also some readings that you can use each time you light a candle. We encourage you to set aside that special time to find rest in the Savior. Have any of you done any hiking or backpacking? Well, I'm not much of a hiker, so when I do go, sometimes I worry about not having what I need. When I pack my bag, I want to make sure I have everything with me. I don't want to find myself in a situation where I'm missing something I need. Except the problem is I end up with a backpack that looks like this. It's super full and very heavy. Have you ever tried to climb a mountain with something this size on your back? Unfortunately, life can become that way too. We like to carry stuff around with us, and it ends up becoming a huge burden that is heavy to carry. We carry around stress and worries, we carry expectations and regrets, and we carry our mistakes and brokenness around too. All that baggage and all those burdens can really weigh us down. We can become overwhelmed by them and feel defeated before we even begin the journey. But we don't have to be. Jesus also promises us that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. What does that mean? Does it mean that coming to Jesus will remove all hardship from our lives? No, not really. What it means is that Jesus entering our lives will give us the strength to endure and walk through any hardship we encounter in life. Advent reminds us that God the Son came and took on our human nature and all that goes along with being human. And though he never sinned, he allowed himself to experience the effects of our sin and the burden it imposes. As God, he became human like us, experienced what we experience, and overcame it. As God, he is able to look us in the eye and tell us that he understands our hardships because he lived them. He lived them out of love for us so that he could help us endure through the journey ahead. Reflect this Advent upon this gentle and glorious invitation from Jesus. Let him enter into your life. Let him carry whatever it is that burdens you. Let him carry the yoke that you carry and give you, instead, the gentle yoke he has prepared for you. The cross you bear may not go away, but it will be transformed and made light in his grace. As you continue your journey to the manger, remember that the child that is carried in it came to carry your burdens. Take this away in a manger craft as a reminder that the baby who is carried in the manger is the Savior who will carry your burdens. Nothing like a little Salvation Army band music to get me in the mood for the season. I love Christmas music. I mean, it's the sound of the season, right? There are carols and Christmas bells, and there's oh ho hos and fa la la las. I guess, if you think about it, there's a whole soundtrack for Christmas. <laughs> But 
sometimes the sound tracks start to sound like noise. It can be loud and repetitive, distracting. In fact, if you tried to draw meaning from the cacophony of different voices we hear at Christmas time, you might be pretty confused about what it's all about. That's why on our journey through Advent, I want to remind you to slow down and take time to listen. I don't mean listen to all the sounds that are out there. I mean we need to listen to the way Elijah, that great prophet of Israel, learned to listen in the book of Kings. He said, Behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in that wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. I think God still comes to us in still, small voices. In fact, another great prophet of Israel, Isaiah, tells of his experience of God's still, small voice. He said, morning by morning he awakens me. He awakens my ear to hear as one who is taught. The Lord has opened my ear. And if I do not rebel, are you listening to God? Does he awaken you from sleep? Does he have your ear? He responds to our prayers when we take time to seek him and to listen. During this journey, you can still enjoy the sounds of the season, sing the carols, chime the bells, but don't forget to take time to listen for the voice of God through the noise. Make a space, find some quiet place, and sit there with your Lord expectantly. Pray to him. But mostly, just listen. Find him whispering through his word and allow him to speak to your heart. Tonight we want to give you a nativity prayer box. Let it serve as a reminder to find that time in your journey through Advent to talk to God. And mostly listen. He's calling to you. Do you know what a trail mix is? A trail mix is a blend of nuts, fruits, and sometimes candy that you bring with you on a hike. The idea of a trail mix is that it's going to give you fuel as you climb. If you're into nutrition or hiking at all, you probably know that one of the goals for the hiker is to have this handy food that is also a good protein. Protein is going to give your body energy for a longer period of time protein over the long term also helps to build muscle. The avid hiker knows they need something that will provide the body with fuel for the long haul, not just a short burst of energy like sugar does. I was thinking, our holiday traditions can be kind of like those doses of sugar. They fire us up with quick energy and enthusiasm, which is nice, but those bursts fade and we're left feeling used up and exhausted. The, tr the traditions are fun and festive, but like the sugar, they don't give us the strength and fuel we need for the whole journey. We need protein in our Advent diet. Protein that builds muscle. Protein that gives us strength. Of course, our muscle and strength as Christians is found in God's Word. It's our regular immersion in Scripture that will give us strength and give us the fortitude to climb the mountains we face. In John chapter 6, verses 51 to 52, Jesus says, This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus provides the kind of nourishment that truly sustains us and gives us life. Be fed by God's word and look to Jesus to fill you. Sometimes a devotional is a great way to reflect on God's word and feed your soul. 
Reading someone's thoughts on scripture can challenge you or encourage you. It can give you insight or bring you to a deeper understanding of God's word. We have a devotional book to share with you for this journey. We hope it blesses your Advent season. Why not curl up with a cup of hot cocoa, grab your Advent devotional, and let your soul be fed. Have you ever heard the expression, keep your eye on the prize? Long ago in the Greek games, a judge would stand at the finish line holding laurel leaves in plain sight. This was the reward given to the victor of the race. As the runner came around that last stretch, feeling exhausted and unable to go another inch, he would catch a glimpse of the prize in the judge's hands, and then a new burst of energy would kick in. That is the picture we find in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, we also... Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In life, and also in our Advent journey, looking to Jesus is what get, keeps us going. We can get distracted so easily. Most years we have a flurry of activities that we must fit into the season. Musical concerts, Christmas parties, shopping for gifts, family traditions, making cookies, maybe even watching all of the holiday specials on TV. Whatever it is, these things can pull us off course if we don't keep our eye on the prize. It's not that any of those things are bad, but if we don't remind ourselves that the prize, the goal, the focus, the reason for Advent and Christmas is Jesus, then we can get off course. So, put the goal before you. Put Jesus on the radar and remind yourself each day that He is the prize. He's the reward that makes it all worth finishing the race. One way that some folks keep their eye on the prize is to keep the manger in sight. A nativity scene in your home is one way to do that. We are sending you home with a small lantern craft that has a nativity on it. Perhaps you can place it somewhere where it will remind you to keep focused on Jesus. Make sure your Advent activities and your Christmas preparations don't pull you away from the ultimate reward, our Savior Jesus. I want to read the scripture, John chapter 1, verse 14, from the Bible paraphrase called The Message. It says, The Word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like Father, like Son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. When Jesus came, he literally took the form of a human body flesh and blood, breath and feeling, and moved into the neighborhood. Jesus took up residence here on earth and lived side by side with men, women, and children. He prayed, ate, and traveled with them. He conversed, laughed, and wept with them. His presence was woven into the fabric of their everyday lives. Over 2,000 years later, Jesus still lives and moves among us. The season of Advent is a time of quiet expectancy and anticipation as we await the birth of Jesus Christ. But the truth is, Jesus is already here, in our neighborhoods, in our neighbors, in us. As we move through this journey of Advent, we need to draw near to one another and love one another with Jesus' love. Drawing together helps us to encourage one another in the journey. We can spur one another toward faithfulness. Advent is also an opportunity to shine Jesus' light in a dark world. It's a time to invite those who don't know the saving love of the Savior to be a part of God's family. Christmas, at its core, is about community. It's about God coming to be with his people and dwelling among us. And we need to embrace that community with the baby in the manger and with one another. Let's draw together now and share a prayer with our Savior. Gracious God, please open my eyes and heart so that I may see and experience your presence. Help me to draw close to those around me and share your love. Help me to reflect your light in the world around me 
so that others may know your saving grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight we share with you a Christmas carol songbook. As you draw together with family and friends, why not share the joy and love of Christ with them through song? Enjoy one another, celebrate the gift of Jesus, and shine his light and his love to the world around you. Friends, we hope that this Advent stroll has helped you reflect on your Advent preparations. We hope that the readings and gifts shared will encourage you as you leave here to watch your step in the journey, to give your burdens to Jesus, to be nourished through Scripture, to take time and focus on Jesus, and to draw near to others who will encourage you and point you to the Savior. At your final stop tonight, I want to remind you that the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. We live in a world full of darkness. Darkness can come in the form of the heaviness of the difficult circumstances around us. It might take the form of the worry we have over illness or viruses. Darkness might be the burden we carry from our problems and fears. But darkness is not the end of the story. Those dark places are not the final destination of the journey. In our Advent journey, the destination is the manger, and the end goal is Jesus. Some will tell you that in life, it's the journey and not the destination that matters. That is not really true. You see, Jesus came because the destination does matter. He came to overcome the darkness and to be the light that leads to eternity. The reason we can continue on the journey and follow the light along the way is that the final destination has already been established. The journey has been completed and the race has been won. Jesus has already lived and died and overcome death so that our journey is secure and our destination is known. We already have a heavenly home prepared for us and a Savior that promises us eternal life. And though we are not there yet and we still experience the darkness, we walk as a people of hope. So this Advent journey is a reminder, a preparation for that gift that's already assured in anticipation of the final destination. As you look at the lights on the tree, be reminded that the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. We're going to sing two verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. I think the simple song reflects what it is like in our world. We rejoice with songs and gifts and twinkling lights and warm peppermint beverages. And we also long for Christ to come again and make the broken whole and the dark place bright. We can echo the longing in the words of the prophet Micah as we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. And at the same time, we can also rejoice because we know our Savior has come and our destination is determined. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. Let's pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel, be with us, Lord Jesus. Guide us through the darkness by your light. Help us to live as a people of hope who continually keep our eyes on you, the one who has already finished the journey and secured the destination. In your name we pray, amen. Before we depart, let's sing. Until the Son of God appears.
Do you